Production of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by people like you and by Hammond Lumber Company with 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire, serving professional contractors and do-it-yourselfers since 1953. Dead River Company, committed to reliably delivering propane and heating oil to homes and businesses throughout Maine. DeadRiver.com. Five County Credit Union, serving members since 1956. Committed to delivering convenience through technology, branch access, and local service. The University of Maine at Augusta, committed to providing a quality, affordable education online and in person with two campuses and eight centers statewide. From the Cross Insurance Center in Bangor, it's the MPA Boys Class C State Championship between the Deergo Cougars and the Cowlitz Blue Devils. One game down and one more to go in our Class C State Championship night from the Cross Insurance Center. We go to the boys' side of things now, where it's two number one seeds, the Callus Blue Devils and the Durago Cougars. Welcome back to the Cross Insurance Center for State Championship Basketball, everybody. I'm Toby Nelson, joined by the coach, Ken Lindloff. And, uh, coach, we look at this one here tonight, two number one seeds, and they really wanted to get to this uh, pinnacle. They both have a chance to win a gold ball tonight. Well, we got a great matchup. You know, we had to wait a couple of days to get here, but... Uh, it's been, I'm, I'm sure the, the wait has been a long time for these players and coaches, but the thing that really impresses me in talking to the coaches is that both coaches really love their team. Uh, we've got strong senior leadership on both teams, and th those leaders have gotten through some tough times throughout the course of the season, and they've had to perform well to get here. Looking at the uh, Northern Maine champion, Catalyst Blue Devils, Ken, they feature a uh, very potent punch. They get up and down the court. Jace Cook, a thousand point score, and this team loves to run. Yeah, they sure do. And uh, Dirigo will play a variety of styles, but uh, Catalyst is one of the highest scoring teams in the, in the entire state, averaging over 70 points a game. So uh, they're not afraid to get after it. Uh, Dirigo can match their style. But a lot, of the, a lot of the games, particularly in the tournament, were uh, slower paced. So it should be an interesting battle of, of who can uh, inflict their will on the other. Speaking of Durago, Jim Bain standing by with their head coach, Cody St. Germain. Jim? All right, Toby, thank you very much. Coach, you had the long drive coming all the way from Dixfield, but uh, nobody cares. It's, uh, you got the new building, you got the beautiful building. And on side of that, you got a, what could be a great game here. Absolutely. I mean, it's an awesome facility to play at here. We had. I was the assistant coach in 2015 when we played here, so some of the some of the guys around the town got to play here once before, and I got the benefit of coming out here that time. And just an awesome facility, great place to play. So we're excited. All right, so well, let's talk about Callis a bit. You know they're high octane. You're a little high octane too. Is the scouting report there? What do you expect to do to battle and beat these guys? Yeah, for sure. I think both teams are probably not going to change anything with what they do. I think we'll both get up and run and score quite a few points and. I'd be pretty surprised if it was a low scoring grinded out kind of game but you know we'll we'll be we'll be all right with whatever way the game goes but I, I would expect at home to see see quite a few points scored on both sides. What's your biggest concerns when you're looking at the video on Callis? 
They have a couple of really good players and mixed in with a bunch of good solid role players. I mean, Cook has been scoring I, I, probably around 30 points a game in these playoffs. And uh, Saka Basin obviously is, is a big, tough fit, physical presence inside on the board. So we got to keep him off the boards and limit Cook the best we can. And, and I think we'll be all right if we can do those things. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you much. Very good. Toby. That's one side of the story is uh, how did we get here, Ken, when we look at the road to the gold? Well, let's take a quick look here. Uh, both teams ended up number one in their regions and look at the points per game particularly on the on the callous side 76 and a half and almost uh, 70 for uh, the Deerigo Cougars and a big point differential on both sides. Uh, the quarterfinal games uh, callous disposed of Penobscot Valley Fort Fairfield and uh, Fort Kent and same with uh, uh, Deerigo took care of Madison. Mount Abram was a close game, and Monmouth, they avenged their only loss of the season. Yeah, lost to Monmouth earlier this year, beat them in the regional championship game. We've heard from the Deerigo side. Let's get the Callis perspective with their coach, Dean Preston. Jim, take it away. All right, the Callis Blue Devils back here again. But you've been here all season here. You know, you've been here at least uh, the tournament here all season, so it's, it's just like a home game for you, really. That's what we're hoping, right? A little familiarity, a little bit of an advantage. All right. Let's talk about scouting uh, Deerigo here. You know, they're I don't know if they're as high octane as you guys are, but uh, what do you see from the video? What concerns you the most? Well, I mean, they've got uh, the Houghton boy. He's going to be a problem. He's a stud, uh, big, fast, athletic. Uh, they've got also the, uh, the Tompkins kid, great little shooter, and a lot of pieces around him. So uh, a good team. They've been here two years in a row. We've seen a lot of callous teams here come and go over the years. What makes your, this group of Devils uh, very special? Well, it's a special group because we came together late as juniors we came together as juniors and really really stepped it up this past year of course it, to be here but uh they they've really come together they're fast we like to run the court i think we played defense with with a little bit of an edge so there's no there's no reason we can't compete today all right very good okay good luck to you all right thank you okay, toby dean preston the head coach he's no stranger to gold balls when he was coaching the shed girls one one in 1999 also in 2016 so he's uh, brought teams to the a pinnacle of success and hoping to see this callous team uh, get there as well. Uh, Ken Coach St. Germain said that he was part of the 2009 team that lost to Callis. That's, that's and, right. And he was, all, he was on the coaching staff when they lost to Callis in uh, 2015. So as a head coach, he's going to try to avenge those losses that, against the Blue Devils. That's right. I mean, there's a little bit of a, a history between these two, between these two teams. And uh, these two teams are among the best in Class C historically, particularly over the last 20 or so years. Callis and Durigo, yeah, on the, on the boy side and on the girl side, going back to the 90s, Callis and Durigo met a ton of times. Uh, seemed like either, each year it was going to be the Blue Devils and the Cougars playing for Class C gold. So crowd starting to come to life as uh, we'll get the starting lineups in just a moment. A uh, couple scores for you tonight. We just finished up one game, the Class C game, Old Orchard Beach winning, beating Dexter 35-24. And in a barn burner down at the Expo in Portland, Ellsworth beats Bruce Mountain 57-56. And the Eagles are the Class B girls champions as they win it by one point over Spruce Mountain. They're the champions of Class B. Sean Stackhouse is the public address announcer for our nightcap tonight, the Class C boys championship game. And we're going to send it over to the table to get the participants in this one. It's the final game from the Cross Center in the 2023 season. We'll send it over to Sean right now. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The Maine Principals Association welcomes you to the Cross Insurance Center for the State of Maine Boys Class C Championship game between the Southern Maine Champion Cougars from Dirigo High School with a record of 20 and 1. And the Northern Maine Champion Blue Devils from Callis High School with a record of 18 and 3. Introducing the participants in this state championship game. First, the team members for the Southern Maine champion, Dirigo High School Cougars, led by head coach Cody St. Germain. A freshman, Owen Smith. Senior, Eric Richard. Sophomore, Dakota White. Senior, Austin Adams. Freshman, Brady Philbrook. Senior Mason Ducharme. Senior Bodie Gray. Junior Travis Wright. Junior Logan Timberlake. And a freshman Trevor Crosby. And now the team members for the Northern Maine champion Blue Devils of Callis High School, led by head coach Dean Preston. 
the junior Jeremy Turner, junior Charlie Bittar, the sophomore Kaysen Dana, the freshman Jaden Newell, the junior Caden Small, senior Landon Ritchie, junior Caden Sockabasin, freshman Frankie Emiliano, and a freshman, Philip Bassett. And now here are the starting lineups for the state championship contest. First, from Dirigo at forward, a freshman, number three, Nathaniel Wainwright. And from Callis at guard, a senior captain, number one, Jace Cook. From Dirigo, at guard, a senior captain, number 11, Trent Holman. And from Callis, at forward, a senior, number three, Alex Richard. From Dirigo, at guard, a senior and a captain, number 14, Trenton Hutchinson. From Callis at center, a senior number 14, Jacob Sockabasin. From Dirigo at forward, a senior and a captain number 23, Dakota Tompkins. From Callis at guard, a senior number 20, Evan Gillespie. And for the Dirigo High School Cougars at center, a senior and a captain, number 35, Charlie Houghton. And for the Callis High School Blue Devils at guard, a senior and a captain, number 23, Matt Dana. Officials for tonight's championship contest are Mr. Weatherby, Mr. Millard, and Mr. Dehitri. Certified athletic training services are provided by Northern Light Sports Health. Final game in Class C. It's the Callis Blue Devils, the Durago Cougars. Durago, the defending champs. Remember last year mm. at the Civic Center, uh, Charlie Houghton hitting the three-pointer to win it. Awesome game. Buzzer beater by Charlie Houghton. And he's picked up where he left off. He's their leading scorer. He's one of the best players in the state. He can shoot the three. He can go inside. Look for him to get to the free throw line quite a bit this, uh, today also. Yeah, Houghton, an all-purpose player for this Durago team. But a lot of these guys, Wainwright, Holman, uh, Hutchinson and Tompkins all saw plenty of time last year in that championship game, that championship drive, trying to win back-to-back -back state championships. Callis looking for their first title since 2008, excuse me, since 2015, since 2015. We've mentioned the presence of the seniors. Callis has an all-senior starting five, and on the Derrigo side, four out of the five are seniors. Upperclassmen laden for both teams. Saka Basin jumping center. Houghton jumping center for Durago. Opening tip taken by the Durago Cougars there in the traveling blue uniforms. And Callis, the exact opposite. Three-point shot up off the back rim. No good. Rebound chased out by Wainwright. Here's Houghton for Durago. He'll try three off the mark. Rebound knocked away and taken out by Callis. Jace Cook, a 1,000-point scorer for the Blue Devils. To Dana, baseline, this is Gillespie, pulls up with a shot, can't get it to go. And the rebound taken off by Durigo. Down court come the Cougars. Left open, Tompkins for three, that's off the mark. Weak side board pulled down, Holman can't get it to go. And we get a jump ball, possession oh, arrow to Faber Callis. Well, Durigo came out in a straight man-to-man, -man and Callis looks like, well, now they're back up into a one, two, two, three quarter court. We'll see a variety of defenses from Coach Cody St. Germain. Ball stolen, taken out by Wainwright of Durago. Wainwright gives it up to Houghton. Houghton fires three, that's off the back rim, no good. Rebound to Wainwright. Houghton's had two good looks. Houghton through the lane, gives it off to Tompkins. He'll try three, that's off the mark. So no one can find the bottom of the rim yet. Here's Jace Cook. Cook pulls up, foul line pop, front rim dip. And the shooting woes continue for both teams, Ken. Well. Down court, that shot blocked out, taken out by Matt Dano with the block. Gillespie's got it for the Blue Devils. Evan Gillespie. Set this is soccer base. And the shot, pull up, pop is good for Gillespie. 
Gillespie, Gillespie had an outstanding Northern Maine tournament, so he came in here hot. Dallas very active on the defensive end. It's like a 2 3 zone. Lane Houghton up at the free throw line as they put Alex Richard in the middle of it. Houghton double teamed. Little pull up pop for Houghton around the rim and in. Good spot to put Houghton right in the middle of that zone where he can create or shoot over the top. Houghton with the bucket. We're tied at two. This is Gillespie. Pulls up. Foul line shot off the back rim. No good. Rebound chased out long by Durago. Cougars run. Off on the weak side. Open. Holman three around the rim and off. They're dry from the outside right now. Here's Cook. Pull up pop from the baseline. Can't get it to go. Rebound. Dana lost it. Loose on the floor. Picked up by Wainwright. Will go the other way. Long three on the way. That one off the back rim for Trenton Hutchinson. Houghton the rebound. The putback goes. Houghton showing his presence uh, inside on the offensive glass. Neither team's really turning the ball over. That was the first offensive rebound I think we, we've had, but nobody's making shots. Now you're right. It's not a turnover situation. It's just not finding the bottom of the hoop situation right now for both these clubs. 4-2, Durago leading it. This is Saka Basin for the Callis Blue Devils. As he drives to the lane, he's fouled. Oh, no, a player, con player control foul called on Saka Basin. They're going to call it yeah. for the swim stroke. Player control on Saka Basin is his first, the first on the team. Just over three minutes gone by in this first quarter. There's Coach Cody St. Germain of the Durago Cougars. Holman gets it baseline. Houghton pull up. Pop, swish. Very active in the middle of that zone. Coach Preston talked about soccer base and how he's grown six inches since his sophomore year. Cook running the show up top. Guarded by Hutchinson. Dumps it down low. The kick shot blocked. That's Houghton. And a foul. Didn't hear the whistle, it was so loud. So a foul called on Houghton. Looked like another backdoor cut. Dallas is trying to spread them out and, and use uh, backdoor cuts off the high post. As the free throw, good. That one for Alex Richard. And we do have subs coming in the game. This is Jeremy Turner checking in for Callis. He'll get one more if Richard makes his free throw. And the second one's good, so he will check out. And Caden Small will check in. Coach Preston going to his bench with a couple subs. Cougars with it in the front court. This is Tompkins. It's like a, we have a box of one now. So Cal is box and one. Of course, the one is on uh, Houghton. Ethan Small has drawn the defensive assignment right to the glass and a foul. So he attacked the glass, Houghton did, and he'll head to the free throw line for two. So it looks like when Caden Small came into the game, he, he drew the assignment of guarding Houghton in a box and one. Houghton's first free throw is good. It's a good sign for Dirigo if Houghton can get to the free throw line a bunch of times. Dirigo averaging about 70 points per game. Catlas 75, so they both put points up and in bunches. The second free throw missed and off to the Blue Devils. Cook in the front court. This is Gillespie. Now Saka Basin along the baseline. Puts the shot up around. Hangs on the rim, falls off. Rebound comes down. Small with it in the lane. He traveled with it. So the ball turned over and it goes back to Durago as Aaron Richard checking in for the Durago Cougars. Slowly to the front court. This is Hutchinson for Durago. 
Goes down low. Wainwright Currents puts a shot up. No good, but draws the foul. So they're finding some help inside, Ken, right now, yeah. going down low. Well, they're taking their time and trying to get the ball inside, so that's a primary. Uh, that's their primary attack right now. Fouls on Jacob Sockabase, and that's his second. That's two on him. So the free throw for Wainwright gets that one to go. Team two for three from the line here in the first quarter. And the second one for Wainwright is good. Two at the line. Durago leading it by five in the Class C state championship game. Jeremy Turner for the Blue Devils. Now Sokka Basin. Off the cook. Stolen. Taken out by Trenton Hutchinson. Hutchinson gives it up along the baseline. This is Houghton off the glass and in. Good poise that time by Houghton. He caught the ball in traffic. Got his feet under him. Was able to control it. 30 second timeout called by the Blue Devils with three minutes straight up to go here in this first quarter. As we see the replay of the fast break, we want to remind you that season six of High School Quiz Show Maine returns on March 23rd. Tune in to watch schools from around the state match wits and compete for the $1,000 grand prize. This season, schools from Fort Kent to South Berwick will battle it out for the championship. It all starts on Thursday, March 23rd at 8 on the stations of Maine Public Television. Well, we talked about how both teams were taking care of the ball and not turning it over, but there's an example there of uh, Dierigo getting a turnover and leading it, leading to two points directly. Houghton with nine points in this first quarter for Dierigo. Oh. Coach Dean Preston out of the timeout, so. I think Houghton started off 0 for 3, too. Both teams started off pretty cold from the floor, but Dierigo has picked it up a bit. The Cougars show their 1-2-2, two, two, three-quarter court trap. Yep, they got the steal again. This is Richard, gets the ball back, goes up with a shot, blocked away by Sokka Basin, and he'll kick it out. Cook up ahead of the pack, now Gillespie catches, puts it off the glass and in. Turnover, and then a blocked shot leads to two points for, for Callis. Transition basketball, Callis is good at it. Here's Hutchinson to the glass, lays it in. Nice little crossover move by Hutchinson. This is kind of the pace we expected. Cook for the Callis Blue Devils. Now Gillespie. And Sokka Basin up top. Down low. This is small. Turnaround shot in the lane. Gets the roll and draws the foul. Does a little cross screen action that time. And small with the finish. Nathaniel Wainwright call for the foul. That's his first. Austin Adams checking in for Durago. So Adams in and Richard takes a seat. And the free throw is around and in. Small caps off a three point play. He's come off and drawn a defensive assignment of Houghton. And he's got three points to show for it. 13 to 9. Hutchinson pull up pop. Back rim no good. Saka Basin pulls it down. Cook now, he'll try the long distance three, comes up short, Houghton with the board, under two minutes to go in the quarter. Cook has yet to get it going for Dallas. Richard, baseline pop, yes. And a good look that time by Charlie Houghton over the top. So Richard with the bucket, Durago back on top by six, back and forth we go in this Class C final. The give and go, pull up Gillespie, front rimmed it, no good, rebound in the lane, Richard shot good. Turner, excuse me, Jeremy Turner. Right place and right time. But Turner with the bucket, the three point try, that one by Richard, no good, it hits the top of the backboard, the shot clock and out of bounds. The last few possessions, uh, Dierigo has not gotten any touches for, uh, for Holton. He's gonna come out of the ga uh, game now and get a breather. Matt Dana checking in for Callis. Dakota Tompkins back in. And Bodie Gray checking in for Durigo. Free throw line, pull up shot, no good. Rebound fought for, comes back down to Turner in the lane, got it to go. That's twice in a row, offensive rebound for Turner. Good balance attack here for Callis, 15-13. Giving it up, Adams for three, around and off, no good. Cook with the board. His cook shot at the foul line, no good. He's fouled. 
and goes on Eric Richard. That's the first, third on the team, and at the free throw line, Jace Cook shooting two. First shot by Cook is good. His first points of this championship game. They're four for four from the free throw line in the first quarter. That matters. The second shot for Cook is good. Yeah, Cook has really yet to uh, get it going for Callis, so look for him maybe to be a factor. Brand new ball game, tied at 15. Richard Travel. Dallas fans coming to life with their team tied at 15. Gillespie inbounds to Cook. 30 seconds to go in the quarter. See if the Blue Devils play for the final shot of the first quarter. Cook, we get a whistle. Player control foul on Callis driving the lane and taking the charge. Yeah, Gillespie committed the offensive foul. He penetrated and passed, but there was a good step in by Diego to draw the foul. 18 seconds to go in the quarter. Callis and Durago tied at 15. Houghton back in, matched up again. Small matched up with him. Triangle in two this time. Hutchinson up to Houghton for three. Swift. Yeah, small one for the steal. Gambled and lost. Cook into the front court. Here's the shot by Turner. No good at the buzzer. And that's how the first quarter ends. Back and forth action in this Class C final. It's got a good one. by three. We'll head to the break and come back after this. Production of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by people like you and by Sheridan Construction, a Maine company committed to building on their promise for over 75 years. Coastal Auto Parts, selling Napa Auto Parts since 1981 with 29 locations across the state, proudly supporting student athletes from across Maine. Dead River Company, committed to reliably delivering propane and heating oil to homes and businesses throughout Maine. DeadRiver.com. The University of Maine at Augusta, committed to providing a quality, affordable education online and in person with two campuses and eight centers statewide. Now a good first quarter of basketball from the Cross Insurance Center. We head to the second. Toby Nelson, Ken Lindloff with you. 18-15, Durago with a lead over Callis, and the pace can is exactly what we expected. Yeah, it's fun to watch, too. Houghton off to Hutchinson for Durago. Houghton with a big first quarter, had 12 points. Yeah, 12 of their 18. Three-point try comes up short. Speaking of Houghton, gets the rebound, puts it up and in. <laughs> He, he can score every way you can imagine. He's already done that. He's made threes. He's gone inside. He's, he's made drives. He's hit free throws. This is Gillespie. Ball knocked away along the baseline. Pull up with a shot. That one's good for Keaton Small. Small off the bench. Has five points for Coach Dean Preston. And it's back to a three-point ball game. Here's Richard. Toes one up from three-point land. Yes. Richard leading ahead of the zone trap after hitting the three-point shot. Along the baseline, a whistle and a foul on Houghton. It's going to be two on Houghton. That's the only way to slow him down. Yeah. Houghton will check out, so we'll see if Callis can make some hay right now. Wainwright and Gray checking in for Durago. It'd be interesting to see if he's going to sit him out for the remainder of the half. I kind of doubt it, but... Player control foul as the driving was Turner. And a good defensive position set up by Durago. That's two offensive fouls that the Cougars have drawn against the Blue Devils. Here we go, leading it by six, 23-17. Just over a minute gone by in the second quarter from the Cross Insurance Center, the Class C championship game. A 
along the baseline. Shot blocked by, as Wainwright goes up for the shot, it's going to be called a jump ball. Possession arrow favors Catalyst. So it's, it's interesting that even though Houghton isn't in the game, Catalyst is still playing a combination defense. Turner in the backcourt. Swing the ball to Cook. He wants three. Takes it off the back rim. No good. Rebound taken down by Gillespie. Has a pull-up pop by Dana. That one's good. Al is starting to do a job on the offensive glass this, this quarter. Had six people score. Callis has in this first half. Corner, it's Gray. Houghton on the bench with the two fouls. Richard in the lane. Pulls up with a shot. Gets it to go. That's a little move off the bounce by Richard that time. Gordis Turner for Callis. Back up to a six-point ball game. Driving baseline. As we get a whistle, player control foul. Doing a great job along the baseline. Here we go is shutting things down. Caden Small call for the player control. That'll be his second. Small checks out and coming in now, Alex Richard for Callis. Dean Preston talking it over with his club. They may go back to a different defense, uh, Ken. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, just straight man. Open three-point try off the side of the rim. No good. Rebound by Gray. Puts it up. Misses. And the rebound pulled out by Callis. Gillespie races to the front court. Knocked away. Stolen by Hutchinson. Off to Wainwright. Here come the Cougars. Bounce pass tipped by Dana and out of bounds. So frantic action between the Blue Devils and the Cougars. Both teams aren't afraid to run. Pass comes in for Durigo. Hutchinson. Screen set for him. Didn't need to use it. Trying to get by his defender, steps in, pulls up with a shot. We get a whistle and a traveling violation. So they'll stick to that one, two, two every time there's a dead ball. And pretty effective for the Cougars. Gillespie. And a foul on Durigo. Richard, I think. 15 foul on the Cougars, so not a one-on-one -on -one situation yet. You get a look at the Durigo bench. Yes, Richard with two, Houghton with two, Wainwright with one. They're five foul. As off the inbounds play, shot missed. It was a set inbounds play. Turner missed the layup. This is Hutchinson for the Cougars. Kick out pass, Holman for three off the back rim, can't get it to fall. Rebound, loose in the floor, goes out of bounds. Callis ball. Good hustle that time by Wainwright, almost came up with the offensive rebound. Coach St. Germain trying to politic for a call. It doesn't work. Callis not really getting uh... Getting the job done with Houghton on the bench, and there's a steal. Kicked away and stolen. This is Hutchinson. Kick out pass to the corner. Wainwright for three. Off the mark, no good. Rebound taken down by Turner. Turner's got some extended minutes here for this Callis team. Off the bench for Coach Dean Preston. Along the baseline, Cook swings it up top. It's, we get another whistle. This is a blocking foul on the Blue Devils. Uh, to me on uh, the Cougars goes against Nathaniel Wainwright. Six on the team, next one in Callis will shoot a one and one. Scoring has slowed down here in this quarter, but the action's been pretty hot. The whistle, the shot, good, and the foul. Jeremy Turner with the bucket and a chance for the three-point play. Yeah, definite foul that time. I think it was on Gray. Gray call for the foul. You're right on that one, Ken. His first, seventh on the team. Dakota Tompkins back in. Soccer Basin coming in. There's the foul. You see it? Soccer Basin back in. He's got two fouls. 
Kerners, free throw on the way is good. Caps off a three-point play. Three-point ball game, 25-22 Cougars. The defending Class C champs up by three. In the lane, nice move to the glass. By Dakota Duncan, gets it to go. Jace Cook got isolated down there in the post. Gillespie double teamed out near midcourt. Tries to step through, player control foul. And they gave the old shoulder hitch to Gillespie did. I think that's the fourth player control foul that the Callis has committed. Gillespie's second, Small comes back in. Small with playing with two fouls. He's been pretty effective on the defensive side. Whistle, carrying violation on Trenton Hutchinson. Allows, allows them to set up their pressure, though, and Callis has got to find a way to, to solve this one, two, two, three quarter court trap. Traveling violation on Turner, so just a game of turnovers it right is, now. Yeah. And, you know, Callis hasn't really gotten into the lead much with uh, Houghton on the bench. High point ball game. ergo has been able to maintain the lead. You're right, Houghton's been on the bench for about four minutes now. Went out with seven minutes to go in the first half with the two fouls. Three-point try off the front rim, no good. Rebound, though, taken off by Holman. Hutchinson for the Cougars. Quick crossover. Kicks it out to the corner. Three-point try off the back rim. They can't get it to fall, but Hutchinson with another offensive board. Out to Adams for three. Bank it in. Of rebounding becoming a problem in that possession for the Blue Devils. 30 22 through the lane. On the baseline, Saka base and up off the glass and in. Got it to go. Got right over the top of the defense that time. You've got to be careful around the basket because here goes really good at stepping in and taking charges. No so turnover, traveling violation. Court, it's Turner. This is Richard for Callis. Stifling defense here by the Cougars. Ball All traps. Loose on the floor. Gillespie up the glass and in. So look what I found there. A soccer base for the bucket. Jeremy Turner made the play, though, picked up the deflected pass and got the assist to soccer base. Has a three point try on the other end off the front rim. No good. Rebound pulled off by Callis. Four point ball game. Cook. Two minutes to go in the first half. In the lane, shot no good. Rebound taken off by Durigo. Cougars leading it by four. There's a whistle, a timeout called by Durigo. So the Cougars take a timeout with a minute 43. Coach Cody St. Germain there looking for a call. There's Leading Coach Dean Preston. Coaches, <laughs> lobbying. <laughs> a reminder that most of the state final games are being streamed live and for free on Maine Public Basketball's Facebook page as well as Maine Public's YouTube page. You can watch on your mobile device, your computer, or your smart TV anywhere you are. Just search for Maine Public Basketball or head to mainepublic.org for all of the links. Well, one thing for Callis is that Jace Cook has been extremely quiet. I think he's just got the he's got two points from obviously from the free throw line. Yeah. He really hasn't got a, on track at all. But this half court trap for uh, Dirigo is, is him and uh, Charlie Houghton is kind of the story of the game at this point. Out of the timeout, yeah, Houghton has been on the bench, nursing the two fouls. As a kick out pass to the corner, whistle three second violation is Logan Timberlake that caught in the uh, lane for too long. Both coaches have had to rotate substitutes in with some foul issues.
Dallas in the backcourt. Yeah, the more success they have in the trap, the more bold they get in, in running it. Inside Gillespie, uh, excuse me, Saka Mason. Saka Mason's he's getting hot. Yeah, he's providing their offense right now. Six points here in the second quarter, and it's down to a two-point ball game. The runner up off the glass, no good. That one missed by Tompkins. And Callis with a chance to tie. The lead's been as much as seven for Derrigo. Cook, under a minute to play in the first half. I should mention that Trenton Hutchinson is doing an outstanding job defensively of guarding Cook. Loader in the lane off the front rim for Cook, and the rebound pulled off by Derrigo. Quickly down court. Hutchinson chases it down in the corner. Gives it out up top. Holman for three around the rim and off. Pulled down by Sakabasa. Gives it out to Gillespie. Gillespie stops. Little jump stop in the lane. Gets it to go. That's the move. He avoided, he avoided contact. Didn't pick up the offensive foul. Was able to maintain balance. 20 seconds to go in the quarter. Tie ball game. Stolen. Pick out by Callis. Gillespie into the front court. Lost control. We get a whistle and a kick ball. It's going to be a Durago ball off the kick. The ball got poked away and it went off of Gillespie's foot. Houghton will check back in here for the final 12 seconds on any offensive possession. Took uh, all that time for uh, Callis to catch up with Houghton on the bench. Three point try. That was no good. Weak side board, no good. The pushback, yes! <laughs> will count at the uh, horn and Durago goes back on top by two that's a big way to end the quarter Ken it sure is that gives him a little bit of momentum when Callis had seemingly seized it shot no good up he stayed with it you see the score at the half the Cougars lead it by two halftime comes your way after this from the Cross Insurance Center on the stations of Maine Public Television Production of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by people like you and by. Expect the unexpected at the University of Maine at Presque Isle, committed to providing an affordable education with a personalized experience full of discovery and innovation. Hammond Lumber Company, serving contractors and do-it-yourselfers with building supplies and custom services from 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Maine Credit Unions have the largest surcharge-free ATM network in Maine with over 250 locations. Surf ATMs at maincreditunions.org. Chinbro, committed to helping build communities and careers. Learn more at chinbro.com. Coastal Auto Parts, selling Napa Auto Parts since 1981 with 29 locations across the state, proudly supporting student athletes from across Maine. The new season of High School Quiz Show Maine is almost here. Tune in as 16 teams from Fort Kent to South Berwick battle for the championship and the $1,000 grand prize for their school's project graduation. Match wits with some of Maine's best and brightest students in a statewide competition and see how well you do with our viewer question of the week. Join me, Todd Guttner, for season six of High School Quiz Show Maine. As we head into our Sportsmanship Awards presentation at the half, we want to thank the folks at Fame, the Finance Authority of Maine, for sponsoring these segments. We're about to recognize some great student athletes. And for these student athletes and all high school students at home, did you know there's free money available to help pay for education and training beyond high school? Even if you're not sure of what you want to do, just file the FAFSA. File now to maximize your aid. If you need any help, you can apply at FAFSA.gov and get free help from Fame at FameMaine.com slash FAFSA. Now let's send it over to the table for the presentations of our sportsmanship the awards. The Principals Association places a significant degree of emphasis on sportsmanship. In all MPA sponsored activities, each school has an opportunity to vote for the opponent, demonstrating what they feel is the highest level of sportsmanship throughout the entire regular season. The MPA defines the essence of sportsmanship as displaying a spirit of fair play and respecting the determination and effort of their opponents and officials. 
At this time, Maine Principals Association Basketball Committee members Adam Gudrow, Athletic Administrator at Setamocha Middle School, and Rick Sinclair, Athletic Administrator at Herman High School, are pleased to award the Northern Maine Class C Boys Sportsmanship Award to the Red Devils of Central High School. Please welcome Coach Q Lancaster and players Hayden Stroud, Colby Bean, Nick Masters, Jackson Pollock, Ben Speed, Nate Cox, Kyle Richmond, Lucas Gustin, Ethan Ladd, and Ethan Woody. Congratulations to Central Red Devils. And now at this time, we'd like to present the Sportsmanship Award for Northern Maine Boys Class B Basketball to the Lions of Belfast Area High School. Please welcome coaches Jason Hughes and Scott Benzie, along with players Jacob Lindlaw, Jackson Falkingham, Chris Taylor, James Ritter, Jerry Porter, Casey Balicki, Wyatt Stone, and Zach Duffelmeyer. Congratulations once again to the Belfast Area High School Lions. So congratulations to the Central Red Devils and the Belfast Lions winning sportsmanship awards. Can a look at the halftime numbers here between these two clubs. Yeah, Callis has got the better of the shooting percentage, and a lot of that was uh, late, really, the last few minutes of the of the quarter. Uh, Dirigo, uh, both teams have really not made a lot of cash from the outside. No, no real three-point shooting. Houghton hit a couple, and uh, maybe Adams. And the problem for Callis is right there. The the, the bottom line is the turnovers against that one-two-two pressure. They're going to have to clean that up for the second half. No question about it. Uh, a couple of first half numbers. Charlie Houghton with 14 points. Eric Richard with seven for uh, Durigo for Callis. Very balanced attack. Turner with seven. Six apiece for Saka Basin and Gillespie. But the big story for Callis, they trail by two. They have 12 turnovers. And Jace Cook only has two points. That's true. And uh, you know, Durigo did it without with Houghton on the bench for basically seven minutes in the second quarter. Yeah, Houghton came back in, you're right, he came, went out with seven minutes to go in the quarter, came back in for the final 15 seconds of the half, and uh, that's where we are at the half. Score at the half, the uh, Durago Cougars leading Callis 32-30. to Earlier today, or earlier tonight, the Old Orchard Beach girls got a state championship. They knocked off Dexter 35-24. Down in Portland, Ellsworth picks up a one-point win over Spruce Mountain, 57-56. And the boys game going on right now. Uh, Orono jumping out to an early lead, leading Oceanside 15-7. They're still uh, in the first quarter, but a good showing for the Northern Maine champ, Orono Red Riots, to start this uh, game off down in Portland. So that's what's going on tonight around the state of Maine. Games in Bangor and games in Portland as we get ready for uh, state championships to end. Score at the half, the Durago Cougars 32, the Dex, the Callis Blue Devils 30. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back with second half action right after this. Production of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by people like you and by... 
five county credit union serving members since 1956 committed to delivering convenience through technology branch access and local service the university of maine at augusta committed to providing a quality affordable education online and in person with two campuses and eight centers statewide dead river company committed to reliably delivering propane and heating oil to homes and businesses throughout maine DeadRiver.com. Hammond Lumber Company, with 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire, serving professional contractors and do-it-yourselfers since 1953. At the Cross Insurance Center, Toby Nelson, Ken Lindloff with you. Our producer this evening is Kurt Chadbourne, Frank Welch, the director. Of course, Jim Baines working the sidelines for us. We'll see him in the post-game report. But looking at some of the first-half highlights here, there were lots of them for both these clubs, Ken. This one over the top to uh, Houghton, who made a nice catch, gathered, came to balance, and able to finish around the basket. Was nice block by Soccer Basin. Finished the quarter strong for Callis. Last bucket of the first half by Trent Holman. He stuck with it. Durago getting ready to start the second half. Callis is yet to come up back out onto the court. They're running a bit late here as they uh, come out onto the floor to start the second half. And again, adjustments will be made by yeah. both these clubs. We'll see what they do. Got a few things to talk about, like breaking that 1 2 2 pressure. And then for uh, Jace Cook, he's got to go get a bucket. Uh, see the ball go in the basket. And then. Uh, Maybe things will loosen up from there. Here comes Callis. You see some of the young fans here, the Callis student section. It's a Tuesday night. They have school tomorrow, but you know what? It is what it is. Durago ball to start the second half, so. We'll see what happens as the second half underway for the Durago Cougars and the Callis Blue Devils. Class C gold on the line. Cougars trying to defend their Class C championship from last year. 16 minutes separates them from that. Triangle, this, yeah, triangle and two again employed by Callis against Houghton. Different, different uh, man guarding him though. It's a three-point <laughs> shot missed. Kick out pass here. We start the second half. This is Richard drives the lane up off the glass and in. We're tied at 32. And Richard has drawn the assignment of guarding Hope at the other end. Hutchinson off to Wainwright. He'll try three off the front rim. No good. Rebound taken down by Gillespie. Has it knocked away from behind and taken back by Holman. Houghton into the front court for the Durago Cougars. Off to Tompkins for three, around the rim and off. Big rebound by Sokka Basin. They've done a nice job on the board. Cook wants three, yes! Instead, he had to go get a bucket, and that breeds confidence seeing the ball go through the hoop. His first field goal, Callis with the lead, 35-32. Hutchinson for the Cougars. Out to Wainwright. And now Hope. So they're going to run flex against this triangle in two. And a three-point try, no good. Rebound taken off by Hutchinson. The miss by Holman, but Hutchinson with the board. He'll try another one. Gets it back. Three-point starts are starting to fall. 35 apiece. Richard at the free throw line. Nice pass off underneath the layup. Off the glass and in for Saka Basin. Great feed that time by Matt Dana. Thirty-seven, thirty-five. The runner up off the glass and here we go. Answers back. Great take that time by Hutchinson right down the middle of the defense. He scored the first five of the quarter for Durago. Tied at thirty-seven. Back in it there, one, two, two. On the baseline, Dana out to Gillespie. Richard, runner off the glass and in. Lots of end-to-end -end action here. 
As a three-point try by Hutchinson around the rim and off. Houghton, the tip-up, can't get it to go. And they give it out to Wainwright for three. Off the back rim, no good. Rebound, Houghton. Houghton on the baseline, shot no good, but draws the foul. That'll send him to the free throw line for two. You've got two players that need to be careful around the basket, too. Houghton with two fouls, and Saka Basin also with two. Houghton shooting two at the free throw line. Foul went on Evan Gillespie. That's his third, and the first on the team. Back and forth action between both these clubs in the second half. Houghton's first free throw is good. 15 points for Houghton. And the second shot for Houghton. Front rimmed it, no good. Taken off by Callis. Gillespie front court. As he drives baseline, gives it off to Dana. Off the glass, can't get it to go. Rebound fought for. Saka Basin got the tip. Richard ducks underneath, lays it in. He's come out hot. Six points. Yeah, played through contact, too. And a whistle. Traveling violation on Tompkins. Turns it over. Dallas leading by three. 440 to go in the third quarter. Up Dang the yeah, dangerous fast. Good kind of a helium ball that time. Well, stolen away, taken out by Durago. Hope running the floor. Tries to get a step by his man. Pretty good defense there by Richard. Up top, three-pointer by Wainwright Short. Goes out of bounds off of Cook. It'll stay with Durago. Bounce to Houghton, catches, puts it up, off the glass, no good, fight for the rebound, shot blocked away. Saka Basin with the block. Hey, it took a gamble with the two fouls, but made the play. Jace Cook steps through, pulls up with the shot, it's short. Holman pulls it down for Derrigo. He's got Houghton off his feet, too. Speaking of Houghton, kick pass to the corner, Wainwright tries three, it's off the mark, can't get it to fall. And Callis with the board, so one and done. This is Turner. Out of Richard. Dallas looking for their first state championship since 2015. Durago trying to repeat. In the lane, turnaround shot by Richard off the back rim, no good. Fight for the rebound, pulled off by Durago. Has a three point try on the other end. That one's good. Hutchinson for three. That's his second of the quarter. Pretty simple offense right there. Just dribble up and take the three. Tied at 41. Here's Cook. Approaching Again, the three minute mark. Doing an outstanding job defensively, taking Cook out of the game so far. Three point try by Richard. Can he answer back? No. Here comes Tompkins for the Cougars. Can they retake the lead? Down court, Wainwright. Traveling violation. <laughs> Here's Richard. Now Cook. Looking down low. Saka Basin. He's fouled. Goes on Eric Richard. That's Richard's third. Coming off the bench for Coach St. Germain. In the corner, Hutchinson. And Small with a shot, no good. He's fouled. That'll send him to the free throw line for two shots. I think the foul's going to go to Eric Richard. Yeah, it's going to be his fourth. Looks like Austin Adams will check in here in just a moment. Two shots at the free throw line coming for Caden Small. 
Has the first shot, no good. They definitely lose some athleticism, though, with Richard out of the game. Adams back in. And the second free throw around and out. Missed them both. Hutchinson up fake on the three-point shot. Dumps it down low. Houghton catches, gathers, and lays it in. That's a tough shot by Houghton. Nice look that time by Hutchinson. He's really uh, taking, taking charge here of the offense. Yeah, Hutchinson with points and distribution here in this third quarter. Durago goes back on top by two. Here's Cook, wants three, takes it and makes it. Under two minutes to play in the third, and Callis goes back on top. Houghton tries to answer back. That's off the mark and out of bounds. Blue Devils to come the other way. Turner for Callis. The Saka Basin and the pass thrown away, stolen. Yeah, he had, he had uh, Cook open in the opposite corner, too. Trenton Hutchinson on the drive. Kick out pass to the corner. Three point try. Yes. Oh, Austin Adams for three. He said a couple of threes. So Adams for three. Durago back on top by two. This is the way championship basketball should be played. Ball knocked away, loose in the floor, picked back up, small, goes down inside to Turner off the window and in. Kind of accidental offense that time. Houghton got a deflection, it got bounced around, it came, came back to Turner who took advantage. Then he comes down and commits the foul against Hutchinson. 46-46, yeah, Turner committed the foul, his second. Only the second on the team here in the half. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. Here's Hutchinson. Now Houghton. And he's fouled. Houghton went right into the post and called for the ball. It's on uh, Turner again. It's three on Turner. The ball tip goes out of bounds. It's off Hutchinson. So goes back to Callis. The Blue Devils can have a chance to retake the lead. Cody Gray in for the Durago Cougars. Front court, pass goes off underneath. Soccer base is good to go. But here in the third quarter, Callis is not only Broken that 1 2 2 pressure, but they're scoring on the other end. The other way for Durago. Hutchinson, yes, and the foul. They're having, they're having trouble containing that young man, though. Brenton Hutchinson is putting his team on, on his back. 10 points in the quarter, 12 in the game for Hutchinson. He's at the free throw line. Chance to give his team the lead back. With 32 seconds to go in the third quarter. 48 48, Callis and Durago. And score wise, exactly what we expected a higher scoring game. Free throw for Hutchinson, around and off, no good. He's about to take it out by Callis. This is Richard in the front court for the Callis Blue Devils. See Hutchinson making it very difficult for Cook to even get touches. Saka Basin, baseline. Small down the lane, little runner off the window, no good. Gillespie, excuse me, that's Saka Basin turnaround shot, can't get it to go. And taken off by Durago. Houghton racing the other way, five seconds. Houghton skips it across. They go into the corner, it's Adams for three at the buzzer, off the back rim, no good. And we're knotted up at 48 after three quarters. The exciting finish coming your way at the Cross Insurance Center after this. Production of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by people like you and by... 
Coastal Auto Parts, selling Napa Auto Parts since 1981, with 29 locations across the state, proudly supporting student-athletes from across Maine. Sheridan Construction, a Maine company committed to building on their promise for over 75 years. Dead River Company, committed to reliably delivering propane and heating oil to homes and businesses throughout Maine. DeadRiver.com the University of Maine at Augusta, committed to providing a quality, affordable education online and in person with two campuses and eight centers statewide. You see the score, 48-48. Eight minutes to go on this one. Toby Nelson, Ken Lindloff from the Cross Insurance Center. And Ken, looks like we're going to have a pretty good finish to this championship game. We've got a ding-dong dandy. What we got. Dallas with the basketball, the pull-up pop, that one's good for Evan Gillespie, opens up the scoring in the fourth quarter. If the trend continues, it'll just be matching basket for basket. Watch out for Hutchinson, he's been hitting it up. Hutchinson to Houghton. Houghton drives baseline, skips it off into the corner, now they'll work perimeter. This is Holman. And the shot on the way, that one's good for Charlie Houghton. So Houghton with the bucket, tied at 50. The runner down the lane, up off the glass, no good. Rebound pulled off by Bodie Gray. Yeah, he moved soccer base from right out of the way there, too. Kick out to the corner, Adams open for three. That's off the back rim. Fight for the rebound, pulled down by Callis. His Smalls gives it up to Cook. Cook, taking his man off the dribble, pulls up with a shot, can't get it to go. Adams with the board. Hutchinson goes right to Cook and finds him early, not giving him any breathing room. As it's Hutchinson for three, yes! What a fire! His third three of the half, Durago back on top by three. Gillespie pulls up for the shot, short. Here's Hope. Running into the front court, hands it to Hutchinson. Feeling it. Holman. Now Houghton backs his way down, up off the glass, no good. And he's fouled. That'll send him to the free throw line for two. Good, good movement that time. They swung the ball around, then cut the ball into the post to Houghton, who was isolated one on one. And he's going to be tough to handle down there. Keaton Small call for the foul. The fifth on the team, third on Small. As Houghton's free throw is good. 19 points here, actually 20, excuse me, for uh, Houghton. 20 points. Second shot on the way is good. Two of two at the free throw line. Durago up on top by five. Yeah, and they've gotten away from that one, two, two pressure. Cook traveling. Momentum in favor of the Cougars right now. But as quick as you get it, you can have it taken away. We'll see what the Cougars do. Here's Hutchinson. Down low to Hope. All kinds of room. Great spin move. What a spin move by Hope. Kinds of room to, to work with down there. Nobody came over to help or double. Nine nothing run here for Durago. They were down by two, now they're up by seven. Five and a half to go. Turn around in the lane, shot rims out. No good for Saka Basin. Rebound, fought for, pulled out by Durago. Here's Hope. Up court, Hutchinson. He pulls up for three off the side of the rim. No good. Look good from here. Dealing it. The runner, Richard can't get the fall, and it's pulled down by Durigo. A lot of contact with that one go. Hope racing the other way, and it's thrown away. A little bit too sped up that time, and it's turned over back to Callis. The Callis faithful trying to will their team back from a seven-point deficit. This is Jace Cook. A little floater, rattles it home. 
Maybe he can get on track. But right now, Hutchinson's got the advantage. Wayne right corner three, no good. Rebound fought for, taken out by Callis. This is Gillespie. Out of Cook for the Blue Devils. Trying to answer back after the 9-0 Durago run. They snapped it with the basket to cut it to a five-point game. Saka Basin steps in, jumper, switch. No one came out to guard it. Everybody's making shots out here today. It's incredible. 57-54, timeout called by Durago with four minutes and 22 seconds to go in this one, Cam. A lot of times you, you, you could find somebody that maybe you don't have to guard that well, but looks like you've got to guard all 10 guys on the floor. See this one. Basin. Steps inside the three. Like it was nothing. So Saka Basin has come to play tonight. He has 12 points in this championship game. Here are the Cougar cheerleaders. Leading on their team, the Durago Cougar crowd. Trying to win back-to-back -back state championships. The gold ball is out on the scorer's table, so it's ready to be uh, handed off, but who's going to get it here? We'll yeah. find out in the next 422. Well, it wasn't easy at all for Diego last year, and whoever wins this game, it's not going to be easy either. Both teams have been tested severely. So out of the timeout, Durago has the basketball in front of the scorer's table. Trent Holman to inbound. Into Hutchinson. Let's see what they come up with after the timeout. Down the lane. Maybe that's what they drew up. Well, here we go. Went back to their uh, triangle and two. But so there's no help. Soccer Basin had to lay off. Trenton Hutchinson at the free throw line. As the shot off the back rim, no good. So didn't cap off the N1, but his team still leads it by five. We approach the halfway point of the fourth quarter. Little weave action, They're trying to get Cook loose. Speaking of Cook, pull up shot off the mark, no good. Taken down by Durigo. Houghton up ahead of the pack. Here's Hutchinson. Gonna take it right to the rack. Shot no good. And a reach-in foul. It may go on Durago and Hutchinson. Only the third team foul, but in the rebounding action, Hutchinson called for the foul. Yeah, one, one developing situation is that Callis has reached their limit of fouls, team fouls, so Durago will be in the one and one from here on out. Durago's only committed three, so not a dire situation there. Dana hands off to Gillespie. In the lane, shot's good. Nice little crossover dribble and a pull up from the lane. Gillespie in the double figures. He's got 10, 59, 56. Gillespie comes out to guard the basketball on Dakota Tompkins. This is Hutchinson. Turner on him. Nice pass off underneath, off the glass and in is Wainwright. So what distribution? Nope, they took, they took it away. Wave it off. Travel. So take it off That's the scoreboard. I saw you counting. I saw you writing it down, thank partner. You. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so a traveling violation. The ball back to Callis. Timeout called by Dean Preston. His team trails it by three. He'll take a 30. And just under three minutes to play. Let me see the replay of that right here. Nice look, though, by Hutchinson. Could see how the play started, but. So the ball with the turnover. Callis with the basketball, trailing by three. It was 18-15 Durago after one. 32-30 Cougars at the half. 48-48 after three. Durago leading it by three right now. 59-56. Fifty-nine, fifty-six. That was the score of the championship game last year. Yeah, sure it was. Three, right? three at the buzzer. 
Can't say enough about the job Trent Hutchinson has done at both ends of the floor, offensively and then defensively against Cook. Cook got loose that time, couldn't convert. Hutchinson was out for three weeks, too, with a shoulder injury. You can see he's wearing a shoulder brace. Yeah, he has played very effectively in this championship game and really all tournament long. The kick out pass to the corner, Wainwright. He has a pass knocked away. This is Cook. So Cook with a steal, puts the shot up, can't get it to go. Rebound fought for and a foul. The rebounding action goes on Gillespie. So that Gonna, means Durago shoots the free throw. Yeah. There is an opportunity. We had uh, Cook in the in the open court with a contested layup. He misses it, and it's going to be a foul going the other way. At the free throw line, Trent Holman. He's got two points so far in this championship game. And the free throw off the rim, no good. Taken down by Callis. Gillespie, kick out to the corner, open three, Turner around the rim and off. Into the front court, Hutchinson. He'll settle his troops down. Off to Holman. Holman and Hutchinson. Really the guys that you're going to see the ball in their hands down the stretch. Out in the corner, this three-pointer for Tompkins off the mark, and the rebound to Callis. That would have been a big shot. Mm. Gives Callis a chance now. This is Gillespie. Nice pass off underneath, off the glass and in. And that goes to Turner. Great look by Gillespie that time. He did his little crossover penetrating move and found Turner cutting to the hoop. One point game. 59 58 timeout called by Callis with a minute 42 to go in this one. Here Take we a look go. At that. They rotated over to help Gillespie and nobody protected the basket. Easy layup for Turner. We'll see what Callis comes up with strategically for a defense. With 142 left, and they they have the one and one though. I mean, they can't give any more fouls. Blue Just Devils looking for their first state championship since 2015. Here ago, the defending champion, and a lot of guys that were on that club that were major contributors last year, including Hutchinson, also Houghton. Yeah, last year they were kind of surprise team. Yeah. Yep. And now this year, everybody of course expects them to win. Out of the timeout, it's Durago basketball. Tompkins to inbound. They come with some full court man to man pressure now. As Hutchinson's going to come get it. Hutchinson wants it in his hands. He's guarded by Turner. Wainwright out there with him. Now Hope. Oh, a step on his man, drives the lane, floats it up in the lane, gets it to go. Great job, turned the corner with his left hand, got into the lane and made the little floater. 25 for Houghton, back up to a three-point ball game. And a whistle, timeout called by Coach Preston. He'll take the timeout with 1.11 to go. You don't take him home with you, so you might as well use him. Yep, I think he's down to one. He's got one timeout left. There goes. There you see. Uh, no defensive help allowed him to go down the middle, so that's that's a tough one for for Callis. All eyes got to be on Houghton when he's drilling the ball. Yeah, 25 points, help leading the uh, charge. Trenton Hutchinson has had a whale of a game as well. Strong uh, game all game long, especially here in the second half, scoring and also distribution wise. Ball when it's in his hands, you oh, don't yeah. worry about the basketball. Yeah. Durago leading by two, both crowds going back and forth. Earlier tonight, the Old Orchard Beach girls winning their first ever gold ball, knocking off Dexter 35 to 24. Jace Cook to inbound. And Ken, you're exactly right, one timeout left for Callis if they need it. Turner 
Off the dribble, baseline, looking for something. Fade away from the baseline, off the rim, no good. Houghton with the board. He gives it out to Dakota Tompkins. Tompkins to Wainwright, now back to Tompkins and a foul. That'll send Tompkins to the free throw line. And I would say, just playing the percentages, you don't want to see Houghton at the free throw line if you're callous, and probably not Hutchinson. No, nope, but uh, Tompkins is a, a veteran and a senior. So you trust your seniors in this position. Yes, the first one is good, and you're exactly right. Sticks a big free throw, makes it a two-possession ball game with 50 seconds to go. Dakota Tompkins with the first. The second is good. Very confident at the free throw line. Two possessions. 63-58. Here's Gillespie. Takes his man baseline, shovels it off to Saka, Basin through the lane, ball knocked away and stolen. It's off to Houghton. Houghton quickly down court for the Durago Cougars, the layup, but a foul beforehand. Fouls out away from the basket. So it's still going to be one and one. That is the 19 foul at the free throw line. Nathaniel Wainwright shooting a one and one. As the front end, no good. Rebound taken off by Saka Basin. Still time for Callis, and they do have one timeout left. Cook with the basketball. Cook throws up a long three that's off the mark, no good. Houghton pulls down the rebound, and he's fouled. With 24 seconds to go. Yeah, Houghton's got the last couple of rebounds. Gillespie call for the foul. That will be his fifth. He'll foul out scoring 10 points. Played a really nice game here for Coach D. Preston. Charlie Hope shooting two shots, the 10th team foul, so he can really stretch it out right now. And he missed the first, so not doing his, himself any favors. Oh, well, still going to be a two possession game. Make or miss. They'll need threes, though. Second one's good. Sixty-four, fifty-eight. Time ticking away. Ball is. We get a whistle and a foul on Callis. Alex Richard called for the foul. Now then, in, in the double bonus. At the free throw line, Trent Holman getting two shots now. There's the front end for Holman off the front rim. One more shot coming. Holman second, around and in. Bodie Gray checking in for Durago. Cougars with a seven-point lead, 16 seconds to go. Here's Turner into the front court for the Blue Devils. Turner, runner, no good. Rebound pulled off by Durago, and that's going to do it. One championship is sweet. The second is sweeter as the Durago Cougars back-to-back -back Class C state champions. And they did it when it counted in the fourth quarter in crunch time. It was Hutchinson. It was Houghton. It was some uh, free throws. The senior class did themselves proud tonight. They outscored them 17 to 10 in the fourth quarter of play. And the Durago Cougars will take down the Nets for the second straight year. And for Coach Cody St. Germain, mm. he avenges those callous losses from years ago. <laughs> No, they'll never go away. No, they never get through. <laughs> <laughs> Got to tip your hat to uh, Callous Blue Devils, though. They played a heck of a game. They didn't back down. They didn't, uh, they fought adversity. They battled back the whole night. It was just, an, it became an uphill struggle for them late in the fourth quarter and went up against two pretty good 
uh, players, particularly in Houghton, of the kind of game he plays, and then Hutchinson now outstanding again. The Nets will come down here in just a moment, then we'll send it over to the table for the award ceremony. Net number one is down. They're just waiting for the second one. They pull the string, and then they can start waving them around. And there they are, the Durango Cougars. Won it in Augusta last year. They win it in Bangor this year, 65-58, the final score. The Cougars are the Class C champions. Once again, they'll reign supreme for another 365 days. Yeah, both uh, Southern Maine teams came into Bangor tonight, and they're going to leave with uh, gold balls. Old Orchard Beach, one's going to Old Orchard Beach. One's going to Dixfield. So the Cougars will accept their medallions and they'll get a gold basketball here in just a moment as we will start the awards presentations. And let's send it over to the table where public address announcer Sean Stackhouse, I believe, is going to start the awards presentation here. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'd like to begin our post-game championship award ceremony. Congratulations to the players, managers, coaches, cheerleaders, and bands from both these schools. You've represented your communities, schools, families, and friends extremely well. They should be very proud of you and you of them for their continuous support. At this time, would coach Dean Preston and assistant coaches Darren Constant and Arnie Clark from Callis High School please come forward to present the individual runner-up awards. Introducing first, senior manager Rafael Antonelli. Freshman, Jaden Newell. Freshman, Frankie Miliano. Freshman, Philip Bassett. Sophomore, Kaysen Dana. Juniors, Charlie Bittar. Caden Small. Caden Soccer Basin. And Jeremy Turner. Callis High School seniors, Landon Ritchie. Alex Richard. Evan Gillespie. <laughs> Jacob Soccer Basin. <laughs> Senior Captain Matt Skinny Dana. and senior captain, Jace Cook. At this time, we ask that team representatives please come forward. 
as Maine Principals Association Basketball Committee members Aaron Mahar, Athletic Administrator at Shedd High School, and Rick Sinclair, Athletic Administrator at Herman High School, will now present this plaque to the Callis Blue Devils, the Maine Principals Association Boys State of Maine Class C Basketball runner-up in 2023. Congratulations on a great season, your regional championship, and a hard-fought game here this evening. And now we're head coach Cody St. Germain and assistant coaches Nathan Schultz and Nick St. Germain from Dirigo High School. Please come forward to present the individual championship awards. Introducing first freshman manager, Ella Cody. Freshman players, Brady Philbrook. Trevor Crosby. And Owen Smith. Sophomores, Dakota White. and Nathaniel Wainwright. <laughs> Juniors, Travis Wright. And Logan Timberlake. <laughs> Dirigo High School Seniors, Eric Richard. Bodie Gray. Austin Adams. Mason Ducharme. Senior Captain Trenton Hutchinson. Senior Captain Trent Holman. Senior Captain Charlie Houghton. And Senior Captain Dakota Tompkins. And now we ask the team representatives, please come forward as Maine Principals Association Basketball Committee members Aaron Mahar and Rick Sinclair will now present the game ball and the gold ball to the Dirigo Cougars. The Maine Principals Association 2023 Boys Class C State Basketball Tournament Champions. Congratulations. Now the gold basketball coming near side and it'll go back to Dixfield tonight for the second straight season as the Durago Cougars, the Class C state champion. So it's been a good night here in Bangor for the Southern Maine representatives as the Durago Cougars winning the boys' side and the Old Orchard Beach Seagulls winning the girls' side. We'll take a break, come back, and hear from the participants in this one as Durago wins it by seven in the Class C final on the stations of Maine Public Television. Production of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by people like you and by... Get cash and forget the surcharge fees with Maine Credit Union's Surf ATM Network. Find over 250 surcharge-free ATMs at maincreditunions.org. Chinbro, committed to helping build communities and careers. Learn more at chinbro.com. 
Hammond Lumber Company, serving contractors and do-it-yourselfers with building supplies and custom services from 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Coastal Auto Parts, selling Napa Auto Parts since 1981, with 29 locations across the state, proudly supporting student-athletes from across Maine. Expect the unexpected at the University of Maine at Presque Isle, committed to providing an affordable education with a personalized experience full of discovery and innovation. See the final score there on the screen. Durago with the 65-58 win over the Callis Blue Devils as they bring home the gold ball to Dixfield for the second straight season. They're the Class C state champions. In just a moment, we're going to uh, go to the floor as uh, Jim Baines working the floor for us, a third member of our broadcast crew. Uh, we'll get some words from the participants, from the coaches, and uh, we'll see what happens uh, with the Cougars celebrating another state championship victory here this time in Bangor. Last year was a last second win in Augusta. This year, not so close at the end. Let's send it to Jim Baines on the floor. He's got the Durago Cougars. Jim? All right, so my first question goes to all the Cougars here. How many points did Charlie put up here tonight? A lot. Who's a lot. Yeah, a lot. 23. Uh, 26 points, 11 rebounds, 11 rebounds. What a way to go out, you know? Uh, senior year, you get uh, a double-double, and you feel better than this. Here. Yeah, I mean, all these, all my teammates, it's really hats off to them. They they push, we push, push each other through, like, everything, and the adversity on the court and off the court. We just got each other's backs out there, and it's really fun to watch us play, I guess, and uh, the results. Give props to Callis. How much did they push you tonight here? Callis is a great team. I mean, if that's who we want anyone else in them. And Jace Cook is a really good player, so hats off to him, too. Very good here. Let's talk to Austin for a little bit here. You know, what did the coach prepare you for uh, for Callis this week? I know you, it was going to be a high-octane game, but uh, despite <laughs> – what, what, what did you expect here tonight, and uh, how did you prepare for him? We expected just what we saw, them to put up a great fight against us, um, and they did. And got us a little nervous on the bench a couple times. But, you know, we always know they're going to come back and make a late game run. So, you know, we can always believe in this team. And it's a great group of guys here. How much on fire was Trenton in this uh, game here this half? Oh, we all saw it. It was pretty <laughs> insane. What? Yeah, were you a lot more relaxed in the second half than in the first? Because uh, you racked up some serious points there. In fact, I got just 17 total here. I don't even know. I don't know how it happened. I just splash, bro. I just. So I usually play a lot better in practice. I think practice me came out today. So, was it? Did you feel a little stiff in the first half at all here? Or? Yeah, a little bit. And then, uh, as the game went on, you obviously get more relaxed, and your adrenaline just takes over. Very good. Talk about the senior class here. I mean, you guys, there's, there's a lot of seniors coming out or are going to be leaving at the end of this year. Just each of you, seniors. What what did you mean to each other here? Tell us what that's all about here. Everything. Uh, yeah, we're a family. We are the closest thing to a family than an actual family. All right. You are about as relaxed as I've talked to a coach in pregame that I've talked in a long time here. What did you know that uh, everybody did, that this was going to be that? This was going to be just a fun one and you're going to enjoy it no matter what? You know, I just had to put on a good show for you and, and uh, <laughs> act, like, you act like everything was calm, and I'm glad I sold you. But, no, there was, there was definitely some nerves there from all of us, but we, we knew we'd been here before, and, and uh, I thought that was definitely a benefit of ours going into that game. So had a little bit of confidence there with that. First three quarters even. Then you had that 9 nothing run there in the fourth quarter. Was it just as simple as you were hitting your shots and they weren't, or was it something a little more deeper than that? So I think we just locked down defensively. We got stops. We've talked all year about how those stops lead us to good things in the offensive end, makes it easier to push and transition. And then, and then for the past four years, there's this been growing legend of practice Trenton Hutchinson that comes out every now and again. And he just goes into this mode that only people that have been in the gym when it's happened can understand fully. Like he'll go and score 30, 40 points in a row in practice. And we finally saw him come out with that in a playoff game. And it was awesome to see and then see him come down and battle one of the better players players in the state and cook was just a phenomenal one of the best one of the best state state game performances i've seen i mean just both ends of the ball well, congratulations boys you've earned this moment step aside coach i think they have something to say <laughs> gentlemen tell the camera what it's like to be state champ <laughs> We saw Old Orchard Beach earlier tonight, and now we see the Durago Cougars taking home the Class 
C state championship by the final score of 65 to 58. So back to back state champions for the Durago Cougars. That's gonna wrap things up here tonight from the Cross Insurance Center. Wanna thank everybody involved. Kurt Chadbourne, our producer, Frank Welch, the director. Our sideline reporter, Jim Baines, my broadcast partner, Ken Lindloff. Toby Nelson saying so long. Final score tonight from the Cross Insurance Center, the Durago Cougars 65, the Callus Blue Devils 58. Good night from Bangor.